Welcome back. We're now looking at uh, the um, interaction between businesses, organizations, and society. And one of the more important conceptual pieces that has come out recently is Michael Porter, who is a very traditional uh, economist and, and one of the founders of the business strategy field, who has written this piece on creating shared value. And now, um, reading that piece, what, what do you think, why was this written <laughs> and why uh, does uh, Michael Porter uh, feel compelled to write uh, about creating shared value? I mean, we're, we seem to be at a pretty critical time mm -hmm. in the world, right? You know, right now, where we're thinking about, you know, the footprint that we're having running our businesses, but the footprint that we're having on the environment and on the societies in which the businesses function. Um, so, you know, it just seems to be increasingly an important conversation, but there's also a disconnect between the business world and environmentalists and other sort of social justice, you know, uh, workers um, in terms of how we get that done. Mm -hmm. And uh, Porter brings up a really great <coughs> framework for how it doesn't have to be so divisive. Mm -hmm. How it can actually it, there, there can there's a way forward where we can all sort of be our missions can be mutually informing. Mm -hmm. What resonated with you in this article? Anything that sort of helps you understand this notion of creating shared value? Mm -hmm. Well, I think for me the biggest thing that stood out is we can't do it alone. I mm. mean, I think it's not the charge of just one business or just mm. one nonprofit or just one government entity mm. to really address some of the big problems that we're facing across mm. the world. Um, and so I think changing our approach, um, not only in terms of how we think, but how we work together mm -hmm. um, to change those things, I think is critically important. I think we've moved from just making profit and just mm -hmm. growing, growing, doing business to really thinking more thoughtfully about how we do our business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it comes to the food that we eat, um, mm -hmm. you know, the clothes that we wear, mm -hmm. um, you know, how are they being made? You know, mm -hmm. are we treating the environment well in doing that mm -hmm. to be able to provide the things that we need. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the entire approach, I think, is fascinating um, mm -hmm. to really understand that it's it's a it's it's a it's a collaborative spirit that needs to be injected into some mm -hmm. to fix some of these bigger problems and not mm -hmm. just one single thing. Mm -hmm. Do you recall maybe one of the the, the basic uh, mantras that he is, is uh, scoping out there in this term of shared value? And clearly, shared value mm -hmm. you know, is putting in in opposition to shareholder value, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The dominant model, the the model that I call economistic, uh, is is the model that he sort of says, well, it's not working, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> and here is a model that may be working better, which is creating shared value. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that sort of stuck out to me relative to shared value is sort of shifting how we um, conceive of business from um, the economic need, a strictly mm -hmm. economic need, to a social needs. Mm -hmm. And so organizing our business practice around social needs mm -hmm. um, to create a long-term sustainable profitability um, and um, to create long-term long sustainable communities. Uh, one of the things that is mentioned in the article is that there's this sort of indelible relationship between a company and its community. Mm -hmm. um, and an increasingly global society, um, you know, that is getting lost. The relationship of the company to the community mm -hmm. is getting lost. You know, mm -hmm. you can order everything online. So it doesn't, mm -hmm. who needs to go into their local mm -hmm. grocery store anymore? Um, but one of the things that Porter's, Porter argues is that to dissolve that relationship is to sort of um, miss out on, or to miss out on this opportunity for um, very specialized marketing um, opportunities or value creation opportunities that was that's intended for more of a community instead of a generic face that no one ever sees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the connection with community, the connection of business with society in, in some way. I want to point out to a phrase that, that stuck with me is like, okay, we used to think that there is a, what is good for business mm -hmm. is good for society, yeah. right? And, and now he's sort of flipping it around and saying, well, actually, we need to think about it in a different way. It's mm -hmm. more helpful to think about it in a different mm -hmm. way, is saying what's good for society is also business. good for business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So uh, changing the frame around which we see business opportunities, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay, what is needed in society is where business can operate. Mm -hmm. This is where it creates the best value 
-hmm. long-term value, shared value, because yes, we're serving higher level needs mm -hmm. and uh, we're addressing those with business product services uh, and, and mod business models and, and saying, okay, well, this is actually something that people need. We don't need to sort of contrive some wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As a traditional model uh, will make you believe, is okay, you need more of this, more mm -hmm. of that, uh, more, 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 more. Mm -hmm. And, and people just say, okay, that's just not worth it, mm -hmm. right? And then it's not healthy. And then and making the switch is a mindset switch. Mm -hmm. and, and for students, I think I want to just point this out in the very beginning in some of the early lectures, uh, we were talking about mindsets and how mindsets are critically informing our actions, managerial actions and other actions. So Porter is pointing to a alternative mindset that mm -hmm. can inform different managerial actions here by saying creating shared value is a better way to create a legitimate operation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any response to that or anything that else that, that pops out to you from the article? Because um, what, I, what I wanted to point to is this concept of social enterprise. We talked about right, this. Right, right, right. Because right, right. 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 Porter is saying, you know what, we, we might need to look for new models <laughs> of mm -hmm. how to, to organize. And social entrepreneurs do this already. They're mm -hmm. creating shared value. Mm -hmm. They're looking at society and the needs of society and suggesting, okay, well, if uh, people are poor, like Mohamed Yunus suggested, uh, that maybe we need to create banking services mm -hmm. for those that, that need them and can't access them. Mm -hmm. So it's a flipping of the model. It's not mm -hmm. saying, you know what, okay, the bank is here, and if you're poor, sorry. Right, right. <laughs> but no, how can we adapt the services to meet the needs of, of people, of the poor in this context? Mm -hmm. And then he created a concept called Grameen Bank, right? Mm -hmm. Microcredit. Mm -hmm. uh, every bank now does that mm -hmm. in, in some way. And it's highly profitable mm -hmm. <laughs> in many cases. And, and this is what Porter is saying. Yeah, look at those models. Look mm -hmm. at these social entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. and, and you were sharing before that you are in your organization, you're already, you, maybe you just give us a little bit of background or the students a little bit of a background of what you're involved with. Sure, you sure. Know? I mean, you know, I think working in a nonprofit, I think, mm -hmm. you know, we are always thinking about, you know, how we can be innovative in, mm -hmm. in this space um, mm -hmm. without being a for-profit entity, without mm -hmm. being a government entity. And the things to change the landscape, how are things looking in terms of society, what they're demanding in a mm -hmm. sense, um, and that we can, we can utilize business resources and operations and strategies still with our nonprofit expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and so we developed and have continued to start developing a program that was just definely with social enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, we developed the concept, our, our product or service that we would, we identified our partner um, mm -hmm. and have been doing that for the last several five or six years. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a new way of thinking for us. You mm -hmm. know, we were we were used to getting a grant from the government, mm -hmm. executing on that grant, mm -hmm. doing a report, and then mm -hmm. the cycle keeps on going. Mm -hmm. So to kind of go off the traditional path mm -hmm. to, um, you know, go Go into new territory, if you will, for mm -hmm. a nonprofit, mm -hmm. even as big and as national as we are, mm -hmm. um, was a little daunting. But mm -hmm. it has really helped us in terms of corporations and businesses looking into mm -hmm. our work mm -hmm. um, and how that is then um, equated to our mission. Mm -hmm. um, and then for us, it provides a, a revenue model for us mm -hmm. that we can utilize to do some of our other mission-related right. work. So it's mm -hmm. very mutual beneficial, um, mm -hmm. beneficial. Um, but I think it's you know stepping outside of the comfort zone and recognizing that we couldn't solve it by ourselves, but together mm -hmm. we can. Mm -hmm. And maybe what helped is the mindset shift. Mm -hmm. It's like, Absolutely. you know what, in nonprofit world, we're used to just getting grants, mm -hmm. and now we're sort of thinking about this as, you know what, there's value in what mm -hmm. we're doing, and maybe we capture that value. Right. And we're creating a revenue stream, mm -hmm. right? And that was typically sort of looked down upon as, right. as not being ethical or mm -hmm. something, uh, not being what, what nonprofits do, mm -hmm. right? So we see that there's a shift, and you were mentioning that before, what Porter is mentioning is this, this, uh, this uh, blending of, of models. Do you want to just share a little bit more? Yeah, the sort of dissolving of the line mm -hmm. between, you know, profit, nonprofit um, organizations to where, you know, nonprofit organizations are more enterprise, uh, enterprising and mm -hmm. more interested in, you know, uh, you know, more traditional business concepts. Um, and where larger corporations are starting to um, develop their social footprint mm -hmm. and be interested um, in, in that space. And, and I was just hearing her speak, and one of the things that came to mind was that you know, for non-for-profit organizations typically have a target population. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the benefit to a corporation for a, a non-for-profit that serves a very very mm -hmm. specialized mm -hmm. population um, is that you get this distinct value proposition that you can create mm 
mm-hmm. with a product, mm-hmm. um, which is being lost in globalization. Mm-hmm. So, you know, here it is, and, and the, the thing that comes to mind, I'm from, I'm from Chicago, mm-hmm. um, and I'm from the south side of Chicago, which is a poor, mm-hmm. sort of un- historically underserved area. And um, one of the things that happened on the south side of Chicago is the cricket phone phenomenon and the boost phones. Mm -hmm. The cricket and the boost phones changed all of our lives. Because we were in a space, we had the major T-Mobiles and the Verizons, Mm -hmm. and we simply couldn't afford $7,500, $100 for a phone Mm -hmm. bill. Mm -hmm. But here you had these um, new company service may have not been the best, but Mm -hmm. at least we can now have access to cellular service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, and it, is a mainstay in the market mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. without interfering with too much of the revenue from other from larger organizations, so. or, or maybe creating additional ones or, right. or, or pockets, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's wonderful this example. And and, and uh, students, I just want you to to think about this as as just a teaser, uh, because there is a lot more to be uncovered in this context. But this is really uh, a way, a new way a more humanistic way, I would say, of how organizations and typically businesses interact with society and how it shifts from uh, society needing to serve business in some way to the opposite, mm-hmm. back to the, uh, the origin, basically, mm-hmm. that businesses is there and only legitimate business is the one that serves society.